Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Bally at Brand. So in this video, I've got something that's very crucial for people to understand, right? If your product is so good that you're talking about, then you should be able to deal with any adversity or any questions, right? Now, I say that to preface that uh, someone that I had gotten into Hex, right? I had given them uh, $50 worth of Hex from the Uniswap airdrop. And it's now like at the most recent high, it was like $15,000, something like that. But uh, the long story short is they wanted to onboard one of their friends into Hex. And uh, the friend had done like a two second Google search and had seen a lot of the, you know, Hex is a scam, Richard Hart's a con artist, uh, Hex is a Ponzi, some of these questions, right? And so what I wanna do in this video is Obviously, I'm not going to share any personal information or anything, but I've got the messages saved to where I can read it directly uh, with the question that they had, right? And we're going to address why Hex is not a scam, why it's not a Ponzi scheme. And then the last thing that I'll say before I start this is that people still think, look at Peter Schiff, right? He literally had the opportunity to buy Bitcoin a sub dollar. And he still calls it a scam 12 years later. Uh, so even though I'm going to pre present some of this information to you and as unbiased of a way as possible and with just facts, no feelings, none of that, just logic and facts. Uh, so let's get into it. All right. So once again, because uh, they said, hey, Bran, you know, can can I come on or can this person come on and, and ask you the questions? And it's like, yes, but they might not be the most comfortable with that. Let me just start off by addressing these questions and then if people ever have any uh, questions you know further then they can always come on and, and answer uh, and have their questions uh, heard and asked so uh, before I do this real quick um, a stream that I actually just watched from discourse syndicate has Motley investor Das bum uh, Papa B uh, this guy uh, some new guy right that, that has had some uh, some skeptical questions uh, they did a very good job in in that stream itself of not getting emotional you know it's really easy for someone to say if you're attacking someone's religion right and uh, it's really easy for the person that's religious in this example might not be the best but just listen uh to get offended and stuff and it's like well hey i'm you know i don't i'm not trying to get offended or offend anyone i'm just trying to give them the facts so without further ado two minutes into it uh she said hex is definitely a ponzi scheme let's see so she said it was strange uh, to have to give Ethereum, Bitcoin, which those were the only two things, which can be used to buy things in exchange for Hex, which is not able to be used to purchase anything. Okay, so let me just get right into it, right? So Ethereum, uh, people don't realize that, you know, Ethereum is like the second cryptocurrency roughly. Well, guess what? Just like uh, Pulse Chain has a sacrifice phase, like with Hex, the, the launch phase, the 351 day launch phase, we had an adoption amplifier where no one's forcing anybody to do anything, right? The, the people that had Bitcoin before December 1st, myself included, were able to get free Hex if they had it in their possession and if they did a claim. Um, as far as Ethereum goes, when Ethereum first started off, they didn't, I don't know if they asked for dollars and whatnot, but I know for a fact they accepted Bitcoin for Ethereum. And so this is just something that exists within the space itself. Um, any other uh, crypto or kind of business sometimes, a lot of time they're, they're taking, yeah, as you mentioned, Ethereum or some sort of sacrifice of value for something else that's, that's better or that's speculatively better. So what I wanted to say there to this person's point is that you didn't have to do anything. You know, you didn't have to participate. It's just a smart contract. You know, Richard is not Hex. He is not anything but the founder of it. And a lot of times people conflate, you know, him with, uh, with Hex or, you know, there's people that use Amazon every single day or Microsoft every single day, yet they dislike Bill Gates very much and they dislike Jeff Bezos very much. And it's like, you know, you can use things like Hex, which are a smart contract, no company, nothing without having to like Richard. In fact, I know there's a lot of people that don't like his personality and don't agree with a lot of the stuff he says but are still in it and they're just using the product, right? Cause it works. So with that said, the Bitcoiners, they didn't have to do anything. They just signed a free transaction 
which was allowing them to get the free hex. And then for those with Ethereum, you, you don't have to participate in the launch phase, right? People like myself that chose to mint a hex via the actual contract itself, uh, we did that because we see uh, a better product when it exists, right? Just like with Bitcoin, Ethereum saw that um, smart contracts could not be built on top of Bitcoin. So they decided to do their own thing. Let me get into some of the, the actual topics here because otherwise it's going to be a really long video. Uh, let me get into the second one. Uh, okay, so she is getting some hex. So I think she will see what happens and possibly invest more as time goes on uh, as she better understands. You know, this is why I gave, you know, now over a million dollars worth of value um, why I gave my family member, my girlfriend, my parents, some of her family too, right? Uh, the hex without uh, wanting anything in return. Because, you know, if you try and convince someone of something or, or tell them about something, same thing. They don't have to participate in it either. And sometimes if you just have extra, if that cup is overflowing, right? This, uh, this cup, if it's overflowing, then it's easy for you to give back and let someone just see, right? Let time be the ultimate uh, standard if something's going to succeed or not, right? A meritocracy based on its merit. Uh, let's see. Okay. So let me just scroll down and, and get into, there's a, there's, there's a couple of things. We're going to try and make this as concise as possible without me, uh, you know, uh, jumping off board too, too many times, right? I'll, I'll try and be concise. Uh, she also said Richard Hart is a con man. Now, what is a con man, right? Um, I would argue that people like, well, it, without wanting legal pursuit, I would say that in a, uh, you know, in a fictional world, it would seem interesting if people like BitBoy or some of these other people, uh, current influencers in crypto might actually be the cons, right? Because maybe they're selling you something that, you know, isn't, isn't in your best interest. And just some of these other things that uh, Richard kind of has no association with, with any con whatsoever, you know, and I am going to take this off really quick here. Um, so sorry about this in the middle of the video, but so what can we analyze with that comment that Richard Hart is a quote unquote con man? Well, instead of just hearing that, which is in my opinion, an opinion, what we can do is we can look at the facts, right? What do we know? Well, we know that Richard Hart in early 2000, I think 2001, 2004, uh, the gentleman himself is a philanthropist, right? He wants the betterment of others. He wants to give back. Uh, he had written a book called SciVive that's free, right? It's free for people to download t.me slash SciVive. But he had written a book on SciVive uh, about self-help, longevity, how you can improve the world. And the gentleman uh, volunteered time for the SENS Foundation uh, way back in early 2000. And I said this to say that, you know, if he was a con man, which he's not, and I'm going to dismantle that here, then he would not have given Bitcoiners the opportunity for free hex. And he would have not have given the SENS Foundation the opportunity to accept donations in return for Pulse at a 75% ratio versus just sacrificing uh, alone. And uh, when you look at who is Richard Hart? Who is Richard Schuler? right? Because I'm sure that's going to be the next question is, oh my God, his last name's not even Hart. It's Richard Schuler. you know, con man confirmed, right? He's uh, going behind a, a different last name. We'll go to Wikitia, Richard Hart, uh, a little bit later, right? For something else that I want to cover. Um, it's got his full docs, right? Just like myself, I would rather dox myself and, and be honest from the get-go than maybe even be more anonymous and have someone try and dox me or have someone try and hold that as a threat over my head uh, because I'm just honest and consistent. So same thing with Richard. Uh, since a very early, uh, you know, 2017 and whatnot, he has uh, has shared a lot of his information and his businesses that he's owned uh, allowed him to retire when he was 24 years old. He had a marketing company of over 150 people. Let me get some water here. He had a marketing company that he retired from of over 150 people and, you know, obviously many different kinds of businesses and whatnot within there. But the point that I'm getting at is when you 
are a suspected con man, then there's bound to be someone, right? Someone that can come out and say, hey, my name is Jimmy Boy and, and Richard Schuler or Richard Hart conned me, right? Here's the evidence. And we don't see any evidence of that. We actually see the opposite. Once again, if the person was a suspected con man, which is just someone that needs to do a little bit more research, which is fine, that's what this video is for, but they wouldn't be spending as a billionaire, right? They wouldn't be spending so much time doing live streams. And the person that I've followed since March 15th, 2017 has shown consistency. So anyways, let me, let me get into the rest of this without making this like a two hour long video. Uh, give me just one second here. Let's just see. So, I mean, I, let's just get to the part that I haven't really answered. So Hex is a Ponzi scheme is what the you know accusation is. Well, what is a Ponzi scheme, right? Uh, we know this comes from Charles Ponzi that was taking the profits, or not the profits, but he was taking the you know, the new revenue coming in, the new people coming in for his, like a stamp arbitrage, something like that, where he would take the new money and give it to the people that were in the system then, right? And it would look like that there was perpetual returns, but that kind of Ponzi scheme in general or any Ponzi scheme uh, is not sustainable and it eventually runs out. It's kind of like uh, the banks, you know, if you have a run on the bank, that's kind of like a Ponzi scheme in a way, uh, not being able to cover everything that you are giving or saying is valuable. So the reason that Hex is not a Ponzi scheme at all is because that would be like saying Bitcoin is a Ponzi scheme. Uh, and, and part of, once again, this is just so much more bigger than people think. You can't just say, sorry, you can't just say that Hex is the greatest thing on earth and then not educate someone about how the dollar works or how uh, finance in general works. When you look at Bitcoin, it's very similar to Hex in the regard that Bitcoin has inflation, right? And that inflation goes to the miners, right? There's there's some sort of mining, whether it's you know gold in real life, physical mining, or whether it's Bitcoin, it's a uh, proof of work. So the people that are mining with the ASIC miners, they're getting the Bitcoin and they're receiving the inflation, AKA the new Bitcoin being minted. Well, when you look at HEX, no one is getting uh, inflation or yield from penalties unless they are a staker. So it's the same mining algorithm, not mining algorithm, but it's the same concept of mining, but it's a different algorithm, right? It's proof of stake, which is safer on the environment, which is green, which is efficient, um, and which is just sustainable um, versus Bitcoin, which the actual mining, the inflation, once again, that's not a Ponzi, that's just called a system. It's programmable. That's called inflation that's going to the Bitcoin miners. They're using that to pay their electricity bills, which once again, polluting, damaging the environment. And the hexagons that are staking, the staking class, they're getting part of the 3.69% annual inflation. Um, but the thing is, is since you're staking, the, the shortest amount of time that you can stake for is one day. So that person that stakes for that one day, they're still getting inflation. If there happens to be uh, penalties that day from people ending their stakes earlier, then guess what? They get a portion of that penalty, uh, which is part of the inflation, uh, based on the amount of shares that they have, right? But what I want to get into, and maybe this is just a little bit too long and drawn out without me being too specific, is hex.com slash scam, okay? Now, let me just read this because there's a lot of good um, points that most people have had. And similar with Richard Hart, where Hex has had so much controversy and pretty much any question uh, under the sun that could be asked has been asked, right? Um, so is Hex a Ponzi? So Ponzi or Ponzi scheme promises high returns that it sustains for a while by stealing the principal of the new depositors to pay the returns to the older depositors. So once again, nobody is stealing anything. Richard is not in control of anything in regards to Hex. It's just a smart contract that's locked, that's completed, that's audited, right? That has no control. Someone could hold a gun to Richard's head and he wouldn't be able to do anything because it's supposed to be immutable. It's designed that way. Um, so I said that to say that the new depositors in a Ponzi scheme aren't paying 
the old depositors or the old users in Hex. It's just people that are receiving inflation, which once again, every currency has inflation. So it fails when it can't meet its obligations. Once again, Hex doesn't promise anything, doesn't oblige anything, right? It, you know, people, they can choose to run a smart contract if they want, or they don't have to. And the other thing that I'll say real quick too is Hex is great, right? Because of the staking. And sure, there's a 3.69% annual inflation, right? But how many stakers you have and how many shares are in the pool kind of determine how much of that inflation that you get. So if you had 100% of the staking class in Hex that was participating, that was staking, well, then you would get you know 3.69% uh, APY. But what we're seeing and in, in what incentivizes people, which people might think is a Ponzi, is we never say what Hex is going to do. We never give expectations, but we just say what it's done or what it's doing currently. And the average annual percentage yield, once again, based on the average staking length, which I think now is like almost over six years. So the average person is making a like 36.6% APY roughly uh, based on the staking. You don't have to be staking at all. You could literally have, like with my grandpa, my grandpa's 91, I gave him $500 worth of hex and we haven't talked about staking yet, right? But he's just looking at it and able to kind of see how it works. Um, but the point is, is yeah, no one's promising anything and the actual yield and the actual uh, penalties that are being, uh, that are being um, I guess, delegated or that are being earned by the stakers None of that is coming from a company. None of that is coming from false promises. Uh, the beautiful thing about the blockchain in general is it really is public. It really is verifiable. People selling the argument that Bitcoin's anonymous is, is actually very comical because it's quite the opposite. Uh, so same thing with Hex. You can verify uh, everything that's going on. The actual code uh, that makes up Hex, I think is, I know it's under 4,000 but I think it's like 3,300 lines, something like that uh, of code, right? So if, if, if Hex was a Ponzi, which it's not, but other people that have been critiquing it for so long, a lot of the arguments you hear are just ad hominem, but if it was an actual Ponzi, it would be uh, able to be seen within the actual lines of code that make Hex what it is, which once again, it's just a smart contract. Uh, so uh, once again, so, uh, this is programmed into the immutable contract with no middlemen. Oh, sorry. Let me let me get back. So in hex, and it says interest, but it's actually yield, right? It's yield. It's yield from the actual uh, contract address and from the inflation. So this needs to be changed because it's just not true at all. But so in hex, the yield comes only from inflation, which is paid to stakers. This is programmed into the immutable contract, the smart contract with no middlemen. And Hex, you mint your own rewards by interacting with the contract. If someone kills me today and hypothetically nobody has nobody has access to those keys to wherever it may be, um, then the actual yield that I've earned on the stakes, those will pretty much get burned and they will never be able to be realized uh, because in Hex, as, uh, as it says on the website, the actual function of a smart contract itself, you have to you have to be doing every function. So you have to make a, like none of it's automated. You have to make a separate transaction for a stake, for an end stake, for a transfer. So you are responsible, just like with Bitcoin miners, right? No one is forcing someone to mine Bitcoin with ASICs, they are choosing to. So then they're earning some of the Bitcoin. Anyways, we'll, uh, We'll finish this off right here. Is Hex a pyramid scheme slash MLM, which is multi-level marketing? So a pyramid scheme has multiple levels. Uh, let's see. Tends to put many middlemen between the product and the user. Look at Amway. Look at these things. Uh, and often has weak retail sales uh, and strong sales of its reseller package. Hex has no referral program. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, there, there are no levels. There's no levels at all. Uh, just like with Bitcoin, right? Is, is Bitcoin a, a, a MLM scheme? No. Is it a Ponzi scheme? No. It's just a currency. People need to educate themselves how it actually works versus listening to the slander and the FUD that's been done in the past. But Hex has no middlemen. Uh, in Hex, you mint your own rewards, just like Bitcoiners do. Once again, just like with Bitcoin, right? Is Hex a bubble? 
Speculative bubble. People simply decide that something is worth much more than much less. Uh, so watch blah, blah, blah video and learn what those words really mean. Well, honestly, I would argue that, you know, bubble is just such a, a wrong way of looking at things, um, you know, because the housing bubble and things like this. What I would more point people towards is that every market has its cycles. And especially when you have a free market, right? If you look at real estate, there's market cycles that tend to be a an uptrend, like an upwards trend and more positive, you know, uh, gaining more value uh, type of market cycle. And then once that cycle itself kind of completes or before it finalizes and starts the next one, you tend to have what's called like a bear market or the actual opportunity of speculation is that chance for the, we'll go back here because I'm almost done, but the actual opportunity of speculation in markets is someone that is less patient to sell and in return that value that they sold at a lower value, say the 86% uh, hex tip that we saw on big payday, that opportunity, and I know someone that sold 20% of a penny, but that uh, um, opportunity of them selling 20% of a penny allowed people like myself and other people that had longer timeframes to not be impacted by that selling pressure and to eventually just do way better. I mean, even with that 20% of a penny, that 86% dump, we're up way more, you know, at least a hundred times more than, uh, than where it was then. So um, that's pretty much all I have for this uh, right now. Once again, uh, one of my friends that I've onboarded, that I've staked some hex for them, uh, they, they've got a friend as well that may or may not be interested in hex. And so some of the, and, and uh, you know, I say, uh, I commend, right? The, the person for asking these questions. And it's really the research that people need to be doing themselves that allows them to see if something is legitimate or it's not. But for someone like myself that's been following Richard for over four years, over four and a half years now, uh, this isn't the first time I've heard X being a Ponzi, X being an MLM, Richard being a con man, things like this. And so the things that we can do if, if we are stakers or hacks or Pulse Chain is if you have that experience, and once again, it's just like saying that, hey, someone has hex to sell, or I've got this idea to sell you. Well, if it's so great, then you can answer some of these tough questions, which is what we're all doing here. Uh, no one's paying me, right? Besides the hex smart contract, me earning my own yield and things like this. But uh, I do this voluntarily to dismantle some of the FUD and to hopefully educate some people, uh, which with nearly almost 5,000 subscribers, there's a lot of people that have been able to do the research, listen to others people, other people's research and validate that, that, uh, that allowed them to realize it's not a Ponzi, it's not a scam, it's actually a world-changing innovation. And we see that with cryptocurrency, uh, it's not going away, right? People tried to say the same thing uh, about the internet and guess what? With Bitcoin, they said the same thing. Over 12 years later, it's still around. And it happens to be that the people, sometimes people pride themselves on their own ignorance, where, uh, as I mentioned with Peter Schiff, he was uh, wrong about Bitcoin being a scam and things like this. And uh, instead of just realizing, and he might he might have already done this, uh, you know, privately and not publicly, but instead of just realizing, hey, I was wrong about this, here's the actual facts, um, I'm educated now, I can update my worldview, some people sometimes double down on no, but you know, I want it to be this way. And uh, instead they, uh, they tend to miss out on those massive gains. The, the people like Peter Schiff, you know, lost the, the million and they didn't have the opportunity to have that 6.5 million X and those significant gains uh, due to just not participating in something that was a new world changing innovation. So that's all I have. This is like a 25 minute video, but once again, I think it's, um, important that for someone like myself who's a hexagon that believes in the product so much to where i started making streams about this with my youtube channel that i've had for over 13 years that i pride myself in keeping um and sharing on facebook and stuff like this i wouldn't be sharing a product a product not a project you know it's something that's complete but i wouldn't be sharing this if i didn't have conviction right i saw so many people in 2017 get wrecked myself included 
from listening to fake gurus and from listening to people and not doing their own research. So um, shout out to the person that had those questions. Uh, I know you'll have more questions in the future, but uh, you know, sometimes it does just take someone to give you some hacks and stake it for, you know, cause you can stake one day all the way up to 5,555 days. But sometimes it just takes someone to kind of show you how it works via staking it for you or giving you some to realize, oh my God, this really is legitimate and it really is world changing, but you might not get it at that time, the first time that you hear it. A lot of people had the same thing with Bitcoin. The first time they heard Bitcoin, they thought it was a scam. The second time they heard it two, three years later, you know, they could have had the opportunity to buy Bitcoin when it was a dollar or a hundred dollars, but it took that second opportunity for them to realize, oh, you know, maybe I should go back and look at that. So that's all I have for this video. I'll end it here and uh, I'll see everyone on the next video. Thank you.